Oh man, oh man. What's up, Jesse? What up, what up? Ooh. So today is actually a huge deal. This is literally gonna blow your guys' mind. It blew my mind. We've been working with uh, Cam Assist from Cloud NC for a little bit now. And we didn't wanna like showcase it to you guys yet because we wanted to make sure that we understood this AI platform for programming CNC machines. We wanted to make sure that we understood it thoroughly, that we could speak honestly to it, to its capabilities. No AI is gonna come in and program everything. It's still gonna be based off of people's knowledge. And where are they gonna get their information? Are they getting their information from a huge tooling company that's very conservative? Are they getting their information from an educator that's outside the industry? How are they actually getting their knowledge? And there's so many variables in manufacturing. It just seemed to me that it was so far off. And we looked at the different programs that were coming out, but then we saw Cloud NC, a company that had put a hundred million dollars into building this and now taking it to even greater levels. The amount of time that they've actually put into Cam Assist is crazy. The amount of people they have working on it, the knowledge that those people, those machinists have, and, and the kind of common sense approach that they're actually putting to it to actually build this thing correctly. Hence partnering with us because we are real manufacturers. We, we can make anything, we can make it efficiently, all different types of materials, all different types of work holding. We're gonna ask the crazy questions. We're going to test the boundaries and a lot of people would be scared of that, but, but Cloud NC, they stepped yeah. in that pocket right there and they're Absolutely. about making this thing great. So they're like, let's test it. Let's take it to the highest levels. Pretty yeah. exciting, right? Oh yeah, it's really exciting. Super exciting. What is crazy is when you look at this rat's nest right here of, of tool paths and code and all of it, and you look at all of these tool paths right here and it actually goes down below this. This is Cam Assist by Cloud NC and it plugs into Mastercam. And now let me, let me like be very clear. It doesn't just make a program and boom, you're just going to the machine. There's certain key things that you actually have to do that you have to establish to create an environment that it can work in. Not only with getting your vices or fixturing and, and your part all set up, but especially with your tools. So your tool library is absolutely critical. So if you just go in there and bring in a part, it's not just gonna program it yet. You have to make sure that you have a library of tools and each tool is specified on length of cut on depth of cut, on surface foot, chip load, on all of it. So it actually understands what kind of tools it has to actually work with. And then it will analyze it, it'll grab those tools, and then the AI will actually think of an unlimited amount of possibilities on how to program this part. And then it'll actually create a program all the way down. So once the program's done, then you actually are still gonna have to look at it you have to analyze it. You have to make sure that there's no gouging, make sure that you know the tools aren't going too deep. And you simply have to go one by one and double check all the parameters and change as needed based on your part, based on the material, based on the rigidity and variables of everything. But at the end of the day, it's getting you 60, 70, 80% of the way there by creating all the code for you. And then you simply have to go through and just fine tune absolutely everything. It might miss some things, it might go too deep in other areas, but that's for you to actually go in and figure this thing out. And one of the cool things, hey Jesse, when you look at the programming and everything it did, and, and something else like this right here, this is with our tool library right here which was limited to like nine tools and it only used five tools. But over here, we did it with their library that, that actually had a ton of tools in it and it actually gave way more tool paths and it hit areas over here that it did not hit over here because of the tools and how they were actually assembled in that tool library. So you can see there's actually a ton now, when I look at it, there's the, automatically I'll think, oh, we're helicline from up here, this and this. But at the same time, you got to go through, make the adjustments, changes and stuff. But the whole point is to get you 
closer to the finish line so you can actually do the tweaks and stuff. But Jesse, it's pretty crazy, right? Because yeah. like, it's not new. They've been doing it for a while, but it's new to us. And this is the worst that it's ever going to be. Right. Oh, it's, it's, it's crazy. crazy how fast it's changing and yeah. how fast they're updating it. And I mean, like you said, they it's incredible how many software engineers they actually employ yeah. that are working on this every single day. So yeah. it's going to change rapidly. Yeah, we're machinists and I got some amazing people out here, but I want to give a shout out to Jay over at Cloud NC. Hey, thanks yeah. for your help right there. There's simple things. When we're looking at this guy right here, a, a tiny little problem that we had when I looked at it would be when this code was created right here in the tool library, we had a three quarter inch end mill to actually rough everything because that got into as many pockets as possible. Like it could do most of it. And, and based on the different radiuses and stuff, the three quarter made perfect sense. And this is a part that I had actually programmed previously and ran on the Heller. We knew the part, we knew what tools actually worked well. So Jesse actually put in a three times D. Well, three times D on a three quarter is 2.25. When it actually grabbed the tool and it came in, it actually made, see all, see this cut right here coming from the outside? It actually made a double layer because it read the tool. It understood that the tool was not long enough. So there were like two layers. So the AI programmed it with Jesse's help. And then when I came over, I was like, oh, you have two layers right here. And he said, yeah, it's because of the tool length. So he said, we don't actually have a longer three quarter inch end mill. So I said, well, we'll just get one. So put it in there and make it like two and a half or three inches long. And he did that. And instantly it basically repopulated the tool paths, got rid of it, and then popped this guy on right here. So once the tool pass is done, then you can actually come in and actually change the depths of cuts. You can change the surface foot, the chip load. You can change the lead ins based on what you might know, but it's crazy because of where it's at, right? Yeah. Because there's certain rules that you're gonna uh, apply with Cam Assist. You know, it's like you said earlier, if you're expecting to download this and, and throw a part in here and hit the program button and it actually puts you out of a good program that you're going to take straight to the machine and run it, you're not going to do that. You know, it can't read your mind. It can't read how you're going to do a part, how you like to do a part, how I like to do a part. You know, it's not going to know that unless you teach it. You yeah. just like anything, any AI, you know, it needs to know how you process things to get the code that you like to see. Exactly. And how you do that is by developing your tool database. I can't stress enough how important it is to get your tool database as robust as possible. I'll admit, you know, when I first got into this, I was thinking the reason why we have nine tools on this is like, oh, what I'll do is like, I'll, I know the tools that I want to use on this part. So I'll kind of trick it by, I'll just bring in the tools that I want and only want to use on this part, create a tool database with that very limited, those limited tools, and then tell it to only use that. Well, that's a really the wrong way of, of thinking of how to use Cam Assist because if you think about it, the more tools that you have in your tool library, the more cutting parameters that you set up for every single tool, the more robust that is, the more intelligent that the AI will become. So it's not just gonna be like, oh, the more tools that's in there, the more it's gonna throw at it. That's not necessarily true, but it's going to look at more possibilities that it can do and it will be able to choose the more correct strategy for a given operation. That's one of Absolutely. the biggest things with the software is, yeah. is it's going to give you what you put into it. You know, you've got to spend a little time up front, learn it, learn it how it's thinking so you can make it as successful as it can be. Absolutely. And when we're talking tool management, a lot of companies, 90, 7% do not hit the mark when it comes to creating their libraries. When it comes to, you know, how you should actually create the libraries and stuff, you need to be thorough. And, and I've spoken on this so many different times when I talk about standards and different things. And, but the truth is a lot of machine shops out there, they'll have five programmers. Each programmer does it differently. Each one has the tools that they like, the speeds and fees that they like, and they're all separated based on those individuals and that's the wrong way to do it. When you're a company, you wanna be the absolute best. So if you actually have 
five programmers take the best from everyone based on whatever application and tool, whether it be threading or roughing or finishing and analyze and, and really go after what is the best process to actually make this happen as efficiently as possible, giving us the best quality product and then make that your workmanship. And so what you do is you actually have the best of the best and then you create the tool list and you put all the tools and then you go material to material to material. So these tools are for this material, these tools are for this material and there's a range of materials and then you go to soft materials and, and so on and so forth but you put in depths of cuts, speeds and feeds, technique, approaches, all of it. So if you have a 10% radial, they know that they're supposed to go full depth and then work their way up. Whereas if you go 80% radial, that'll probably be like taking a smaller piece of the end mill and coming in, but you just, you really have to specify what the technique is. But when you create this tool library, then you make that the way the company does it and all programmers agree to use the same tool libraries and you make them absolutely perfect. And then that is a tool library that AI will be able to use in your own shop. It's not gonna use anybody else's stuff, it's gonna use your stuff and that'll give the AI a playground to actually have success. Makes sense, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And that's one of the most common misconceptions of, of that I see with AIs is most videos, everybody's covered this topic, right? Is yeah. AI gonna be programming parts and taking my job? That's just not true. And you still need a, a skilled machinist. It's not going to teach you how to be a machinist. It can teach you how to learn the software. And I've actually used it so far doing that. Like, okay, I, I know how I wanna do this feature or whatever, but hey, let me run this through Cam Assist and see how it would actually approach this yeah. so it's actually teaching me things about the software that i didn't know before and that's really cool side effect but it's not going to teach you machining you still need a skilled machinist that can go in and know what he's looking at know where it's failing know where it's you know 100 uh, giving you some good tool path and stuff so rearranging things how you want to rearrange it yeah. and because it's going to have a workflow that it's going to follow yeah. And it may not necessarily be the workflow that you would actually use. Hole making, for instance, it does. So it's going to do like facing, roughing, flat finishing, wall finishing, free form, deburring, you know, hole making, deburring. It's going to use that process. Well, you might want to move your holes to the top after the facing. That way you can use those holes, drop in and start roughing. That's part of that 20, 30 percent at the end that you're going to need to do to yeah. fine tune this program how you want it. Yeah, one, one thing that I, I'd say is people that don't have a huge amount of experience, like you're, you're good programmers, this will give you ideas on tool paths and open your mind to things that you probably wouldn't have thought of. So in one way, I see it as being a huge advantage in, in that, you know? Truthfully, if it's a very simple part, you might be able to just set it up and program it. I mean, I'm pretty quick, you're pretty quick, right? You know, making a toolpath isn't that difficult when it's just a few toolpaths and stuff. But when you have more intricate parts, when you actually have a lot of different pockets and you just have to make chain after chain after chain and, and go through all the motions that you have to go through, this can actually be a huge benefit. And one thing that I see is companies that have, you know, you might have like eight programmers and they're all starting from ground zero. Well, what if you actually take one of the programmers that's actually pretty decent, but he's not like super top level, and he looks at all the jobs that are gonna be programmed over the next two months. He can go through, he can bring them in, he can actually use Cam Assist and MasterCam to take it to the 80% or wherever he can actually get it to, and then he can actually lock it and, and put it to the side for a different programmer now. And he basically can just stage all of these programs, instead of just being like at ground zero, they're actually at 60%, 80%, 70%, depending on the environment that you guys created with your tool libraries and the success that you're having. So, you know, when Jesse says, oh, it's not taking your job, it's making it more efficient, mm -hmm. but time is money. And what we wanna do is manufacture, no matter where you live in the world, we wanna manufacture our own parts in our own countries. And we wanna have as many jobs go through our shop as possible and run them as efficiently as possible. So that's what it's gonna do is make you more efficient.
once you get the process down it's going to make you more efficient and it's going to make you more money because you can get more programming done more more parts out the door uh quicker yeah and to all the skilled programmers you know this is really going to help you cut down on that mundane stuff like you were talking about yeah. you know that's its biggest benefit you know where you can spend more of your time working on those complex five axis programs and not have to worry about programming the mundane stuff for the fixturing and all that you know that's really going to be a huge time saver in that regard 100 percent. one thing that i want to say too you see all the monitors right here but we actually have an orbital computer that's actually running the software so orbital we actually sell it on our store we have a titan series of platforms for desktop different levels of course the price goes up as it gets more in depth and crazy but all of them are amazing and uh, everybody who's purchased one says nothing but great things so it just speeds up the process you got laptops all of it you got lo lower level that still do great and then you got higher level that are just like super quick super fast and just super efficient yeah. and stuff so orbital on our website and you actually bought one too huh yeah i actually personally bought one on our website uh he to purchased it from the website <laughs> i was like dude of course i'm going to give you a deal and he's like no i just went and bought it man i was yeah. just like come on man I've been i'm like it. give him the money back give yeah. him the money back <laughs> so i think on this first video we've talked about the necessary details i am super excited this is yeah crazy software so we'll put out another video probably in about a week or so and we'll actually go through and we'll show you how we got to this point we'll literally walk you through what you need to do to get it to program a part and then how you have to analyze it so next video we'll actually go through the programming we'll go through the process and just kind of like have an intimate look at how you do it all right so in about a week look for another video Boom. Oh. Thanks, brother. Yeah, so good.